Welcome to Whiskey Cast, cask strength conversation featuring news and interviews from the world of whiskey. I'm Mark Gillespie. This is episode number 912 for December 19th, 2021. Coming up in a few minutes. Getting attachments to emails back from Billy himself that he had literally taken a pen and scratched and added notes and drawn on like my first my first offerings as like potential labels and stuff um unfortunately i wish i had the physical copy because that'd be a pretty cool thing to have we've seen a lot of musicians and other celebrities collaborating with whiskey makers in recent years whether it's a full-on partnership or just lending their brand to a whiskey but what goes into that collaboration Balconis head distiller Jared Hempstead joins us later on Whiskey Cast in depth with the backstory on his new Trace Hombres collaboration with the legendary Texas rock band ZZ Top and how the recent death of the band's Dusty Hill could have shelved the whole project. That's just ahead, along with the What I'm Tasting This Week department, your voice behind the label, and. Our original goal was a million, I think. You know, let's get two, and then three, and then four, and just keep going. The news is next on this week's Whiskey Cast. This holiday season, gift like you mean it with free custom labels from Dewar's. Simply choose your bottle, enter your message, and get a label shipped right to your door. Make Dewar's Scotch Whiskey personal by visiting Dewar's.com and start crafting the perfect holiday gift. And now, a message from Robin Redbreast. Not to throw shade on other holiday gifts, but gift cards, really? First, you can't pour, sip and share them. And second, they're so small that you can easily forget about them. (laughs) Wait, do people say that about me? Proud sponsor of WhiskeyCast, Redbreast. Pass it on. Let's get started with the news. It's brought to you by the Dalmore. Last time around, I mentioned the bourbon auction being organized to help raise money for the victims of last weekend's deadly tornadoes in western Kentucky. The online auction went live Thursday night with the first batch of items, and the results so far are just amazing. More than $1.6 million in bids have already come in, and that's even before the live auction this Tuesday. The high bid so far is $280,000, for a 19-year-old private barrel selection at Willett Distillery. The auction was organized by the Bourbon Crusaders, the Kentucky Distillers Association, and our friend Fred Minnick, who told me Saturday that the results so far completely blew them away. As soon as we turned it on, it was like Angel's Envy went to 40000 uh, As soon as um, uh, Willett went up, it got to like 100000 and. Four Roses, the 17 to 24 year old barrel pick, got to like 150 thousand within six hours. So, you know, we we definitely what we saw here is we saw the bourbon community in action, but we also saw people kind of pulling the resources together, knowing that this was something special uh, that they wanted to, you know, help Western Kentucky. And some of it is about the bottles, but and and, and the experiences. But I think this is just showing how big the heart of the Bourbon community is. And it, it, it's it's a community that's always giving back. And, you know, this hit us hard in Kentucky. And, you know, this is this is people showing up for, for Kentucky. And it's not over by any stretch. You've still got a couple of days left until Tuesday, right? Yeah. So how, how it works is we have a few items that are going to be pulled for a live auction. So essentially... Yeah, right now it's all online. If you see live auction in the tag at the top, that means uh, your bid is essentially a pre-bid, and we will go to a live bid where our auctioneer, Bill Minich, will do the auction call. You will still be bidding like you're online, but he's going to be calling it from the inside of, of the network, um, and it'll be broadcast out on my YouTube channel, and people will get to see that live in real time. Uh, And when you do a live auction, you get a chance to really uh, discuss, you know, why it's important. You know, we can put it in text and everything, but, you know, when you hear people talk about it, sometimes, you know, people make, you know, instant decisions and decide like, you know what, I'm I'm going all in. I'm I'm going all in. I know I can afford this. Uh, And so live auctions can 
can typically generate more money. And the whole goal here is to generate funds for the Western uh, Kentucky relief. And the big thing too is like, you can just go donate. Like, I mean, we can look at those numbers. They're gaudy. I mean, like you look at, look at some of those bottles. There's a, there's a Van Winkle bottle, the, the decanter going for $44,000 right now. Uh, it might hit a hundred thousand dollars before the auction is over. You can look at it and think, well, I'm out, but there are some things in there uh, within budgets. But more importantly, there's a donate now button. You know, you can get in that auction. You can just drop 20 bucks and you're helping. And even if you just take the auction link and you share it, kybourbonbenefit.com, take that link, you share it. And, you know, you're hitting your audience and you're telling your friends. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to get the word out there and trying to get people inside the auction bidding and, and helping Western Kentucky. And you make a real good point. There are a lot of high dollar items, but there are some things that are in the hundred dollar range that people can start mm-hmm. the bidding on and that anybody can really afford realistically if they yeah. have that level of money and want to do something small. That's right. And, and also there's some buy nows and we, we kind of like, for those who have been like in the auction watching it, you'll see something like uh, like a Doc Swenson experimental cask came in as a buy now at 160 bucks. That was at the request and that got picked up right away. So people who are, you know, in the auction watching it are, are really getting rewarded because there are some buy nows that are popping up like that. Uh, and I think too, there are some bottles in there that are not getting the attention they deserve, like an original Sam Houston bottle, a 10 year old that Trey and uh, Chet Zoller put together, you know, the founders of Jefferson, you know, that's an incredible bottle of whiskey. Last time I checked, it was only around 500. I think, I mean, to me, that's a 2000 to $3,000 bottle. Bidding continues through Tuesday evening, the 21st, at kybourbonbenefit.com, and all of the proceeds will go to the state's Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. We'll have the final results of the auction next time around. Now, that is the good news this week. The bad news is that things are starting to look a lot like this time a year ago with a return to COVID-related lockdowns and restrictions. The Netherlands has ordered a nationwide lockdown because of rising numbers of COVID cases, including the closings of bars, restaurants, and non-essential stores until at least January 14th. That follows Norway's complete ban on bars and restaurants serving alcohol until the 14th as well. In Ireland, pubs are being allowed to stay open for now, but have to close at 8 o'clock each night as of today. We have also had a number of whiskey events affected by the latest wave of COVID cases. Tickets for next month's Victoria Whiskey Festival in British Columbia had been scheduled to go on sale today. That has now been postponed until after the holidays, while festival organizers and local health regulators review the situation. And with the situation in Norway, the organizers of the Bergen Whiskey and Beer Festival scheduled for next month have now postponed their event until later in the year. In addition, the Whiskey Exchange in London has also canceled plans for the Whiskey Show Old and Rare event in February. In addition to COVID, organizers also cited Brexit-related issues, with importers being able to send samples over from Europe. There are plans to hold virtual tastings online. Supply chain issues are still plaguing the whiskey industry, as we have been reporting for some time now. The latest example comes from Wales, where the Welsh whiskey company's charity bottling of Penderin has been stuck in what the distillery referred to in its announcement as, quote, logistics hell. Penderin CEO Stephen Davies told me this week that Hereith was supposed to be available worldwide in time for Christmas to give people of Welsh descent a taste of home. Hereith is a, is in in the Welsh language, it's a, it's a word which uh, kind of reflects a, a longing for home, um, maybe a sort of a, almost like a homesickness, a, you know, wanting to be back where you belong. And uh, we kind of felt, you know, do, obviously during the pandemic and uh, when, I mean, some people are stuck at home, but other people can't get home. We thought that as a theme, it was probably a nice one to address. 
Uh, and it really is a special word to people in Wales. You know, that sense of belonging is something that you you get through here, through this beautiful Welsh word. Um, so we decided to make it a, a, a charity project and to contribute to, to charities that reflected that. So young people who were in difficulty, you know, in a homeless situation maybe, um, and that kind of thing. So it just seemed to make sense. And we've been trailing the project for, um, you know, six or seven months now. But we really, we were hoping to get, the, you know, to have got the bottling out a bit earlier. But um, we had all sorts of uh, challenges, uh, as you say, of just getting the raw, raw materials and uh, getting things in, in line. So that's been a little bit disappointing. Uh, however, the, the, you know, the, the product is out now and um, I'm very, very pleased with it. And it'll be in the States, you know, in the new year. And not early in the new year, but it will be in the States sometime in 2022. So we're very excited about that. Give me a sense of the logistics issues that uh, were created that kept this from getting to market sooner. Yeah, you, you know, it's. I, I think it's been... Throughout the pandemic, we we didn't really encounter any problems with uh, supply chain. Things were running fairly well. We were at a you know pretty much consistent um, level of performance, and it's really been almost sort of as we've been coming to a more of a post pandemic when when the the UK has certainly opened up a little bit, and we thought we we're going to get a bit easier. But as far as the supply chain has gone, it's got a lot of, a lot more difficult, um, and it's been things like just lead times on on glass bottles. And then trying to get those bottles decorated, uh, which has been a problem. Uh, and then once we've been able to get the stuff into the distillery, which also hasn't been easy because haulage and delivery drivers have been in short supply, um, we get it in, we fill it with our beautiful whiskey and we package. And then we can't get the stuff out then because um, trying to get couriers to come and take product out of the distillery has been has been challenging as well. Um, so it's... Um, I think anything that could go wrong has gone wrong with this one. Uh, not something we're not something we're used to, you know, because we work with very long term partners and suppliers, but uh, they've all been struggling, and uh, it came a little bit unexpectedly because things had gone so well at the height of the pandemic, and we were still working and we were still distilling, and uh, so these issues have really started to uh, materialize uh, in the last few months. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a challenge, but I mean, you know, that's what we're there for to try and. To move these things on and uh, we've been able to i say we've been able to get the product on on market at least in the uk and europe before christmas and that was the goal right i know the plan was to try to get it out last friday on the 10th and it didn't quite work did it no well we've we've, we've been we've been getting deliveries of um you know um hundreds of bottles a day now you know we, they've been hand decorated and polished and um and then delivered to us so uh, it's been, yeah, it's been challenging. Uh, I mean, I should have, we should have had it out three months ago. That was the the original plan was to have it out quite a long time ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, it just went from one issue to another to another. So even as we were launching last week, we were just waiting for supplies of, of glass bottles to turn up. Fortunately, we, we do all our own bottling and our own packaging and stuff. So that's within our control. Uh, but you can't do it if you've got nothing to fill. I know that a bunch of uh, the whiskey producers and other spirits producers in the UK have uh, been warning the government that this was going to be a problem. Has yeah. has there been any help at all out of London on this in, in terms of trying to resolve this with the government? I think the government have been doing some things to grant licenses, temporary licenses for, for lorry drivers um, to help with the haulage and the logistics issues. But some of the other things, you know, we're not actually, I mean, we buy our glass bottles from, from mainland Europe. So it's not within the UK government's uh, gift to sort that out. So I think some of the issues are really things that are just business business issues and business challenges. So, um, yeah, you hope you always hope that government will give you a good business environment. I think that's all you can ask for. Um, and I would say they're trying, but, uh, you know, it has been a very, very fluid situation. The goal is to raise £20,000 with Hereith for two Welsh charities that focus on youth homelessness and mental health issues. Inventories of whiskies and other spirits, well, practically everything else, at the provincial liquor stores in Quebec have been in even shorter supply this holiday season, not because of supply chain issues, 
But because of a strike by distribution center workers at the SAQ, Quebec's government liquor monopoly. This weekend, Canadian Union of Public Employees members approved a new contract with the SAQ. The 800 workers had been on strike since November 23rd, after going without a new contract since April. SAQ executives say it may take a few weeks to get their stores fully stocked again. There's a new free trade agreement between the UK and Australia, and Irish whiskey makers are celebrating because it actually reflects what's really happening within the Irish whiskey industry. The agreement calls for no tariffs on UK whiskies that are exported to Australia, and that includes Irish whiskies produced in Northern Ireland. Now, most agreements like this would require that all of that whiskey be distilled in Northern Ireland to qualify. However, remember that most blended Irish whiskies use both grain and malt whiskies, and there is no grain whiskey distillery currently operating in Northern Ireland. That means all of the grain whiskey in those blends has to come from the Republic of Ireland. UK and Australian trade negotiators recognized that dilemma, so there's an exception in place to allow for the use of grain whiskey distilled in the Republic of Ireland as long as it's matured and blended in Northern Ireland. Irish Whiskey Association leaders are pushing the European Union to adopt similar language as it negotiates a new free trade deal with Australia. We have reported on the potential risk in cask investment schemes before, and Texas state regulators have ordered a UK-based whiskey investment group to stop doing business in the state. The emergency cease and desist order comes not from Texas alcohol regulators, but from the Texas State Securities Board. It claims the Whiskey and Wealth Club Limited is misleading potential investors with the claims in its online ads. Those ads claim investors could earn between 12 and 20 percent annualized returns on their cask investments after three years or longer. But the board's enforcement director points out that the club has not even been incorporated for three years. Among other things, the order also accuses the group of not providing investors with a contract for their purchase until after they send a cash deposit, along with failing to disclose potential risks and other critical information. The group's owners told the Spirits Business that their operations do comply with UK laws and that they are not selling so-called securities. They plan to work with the Texas regulators to explain their business model. Finally, one of the biggest headaches about traveling over the holidays is checking your luggage before a flight. Of course, if you are traveling with a bottle of whiskey, there's no way to avoid checking a bag. Maker's Mark is offering to reimburse travelers up to $40 for checked bag fees on flights through December 31st. The Whiskey Flights offer requires that you upload a copy of your checked bag fee receipt at the Maker's Mark website, and winners will be selected from all of the eligible entries. You can keep up with the latest whiskey news all week long at whiskeycast.com. The news is brought to you by the Dalmore. Hello, Richard Patterson here, master distiller, master blender for the Dalmore. You know, whenever the team and I are in the world sharing our exceptional single malt, we like to keep in touch with Mark Gillespie and the latest news from Whiskey Cast. Time now for the Whiskey Cast calendar of events. It's brought to you by Catoctin Creek Distilling. Bonhams and McTeers will kick off the 2022 auction schedule with whiskey auctions on January 21st, Bonhams in Hong Kong, and McTeers in Glasgow, Scotland. As of now, the National Whiskey Festival is still scheduled for January 22nd in Glasgow, along with Glasgow's Whiskey Festival on February 19th. 
The Whiskey Global is still selling tickets for its event in Vancouver, British Columbia, January 28th and 29th. And the Southport Winter Whiskey Festival is on for February 11th and 12th in Southport, England. The Newcastle Whiskey Festival is set for the 26th of February in Newcastle, England, along with Dramfest 2022 that weekend in Christchurch, New Zealand. The Fife Whiskey Festival is set for the weekend of March 4th through the 6th in Cooper, Scotland, and that same weekend is Whiskey Birmingham in Birmingham, England, and the Roma Whiskey Festival in Rome, Italy. Remember, all in-person events are still very much subject to change on short notice, and you are probably going to have to show proof of vaccination or a recent negative COVID test in order to attend. The calendar of events is brought to you by Catoctin Creek Distilling, makers of the Virginia Rye Whiskey. Catoctin Creek co-founder Scott Harris is leading his annual online Art of the Cocktail class once again this winter. The fun happens each Friday night starting on January 7th. You can get all the details at CatoctinCreekDistilling.com and Catoctin Creek reminds you to always drink responsibly. And now, a message from Robin Redbreast. So, in Spain, they call Redbreast Petty Rocco. It's me, but a touch more exotic. Kind of like a Redbreast PX edition. Finished in Pedro Jimenez casks, adding a velvety and decadent dimension. You know, I won't lie. A climate like this makes me wish I was a migratory bird. Proud sponsor of Whiskey Cast, Redbreast. Pass it on. Whiskey Cast in Depth is brought to you by Oban and the Classic Malts lineup. Music and whiskey have gone together for generations. Just look at any old photo of Frank Sinatra or Janis Joplin with glasses or bottles of Jack Daniels if you need any proof of that. We've seen a lot of collaborations in recent years where musicians have taken a more active role when it comes to their whiskey, though. From the extremes like Metallica's partnership with the late Dave Pickerel to create their blackened American whiskey brand, to simple licensing deals where a band or singer puts their name on a whiskey. The legendary Texas rock band ZZ Top recently collaborated with Balconis Distilling in Waco on the new Trace Hombres Texas Whiskey. And to get a sense of how that collaboration worked, I talked with Balconis head distiller Jared Hempstead. We didn't know you guys were working with ZZ Top on this. How did this come about? <laughs> yeah, um, obviously we all know Fred minnick has been doing a lot of uh, music-related uh, kind of the overlap with, with music and the concert series and all that stuff. And even a lot of his guests bringing kind of whiskey world and, and, and music world together. Um, turns out his management, his agency that he works with is also uh, who ZZ top is managed by. And um, I don't know the, all the origins of the conversation, but they were at a point where they, they thought it was a little overdue that they had never done, um, you know, their own kind of branded whiskey, and of course, some of our some of our first uh, questions and hesitations were: Is this actually going to be a collaboration? As we both know, a lot of these things actually aren't. Uh, it's a licensing agreement, and you put a, throw something on a product that's very similar to something you already make. Um, so we were pretty adamant that they be involved, and that this actually would be some back and forth. And um, yeah, it was great. They, you know, it was COVID, so there was a lot of Zoom uh, and le- not so much in person stuff. Um, but actually getting, uh, getting attachments to emails back from Billy himself that he had literally taken a pen and scratched and added notes and drawn on like my first, my first offerings as like potential labels and stuff. Um, unfortunately I wish I had the physical copy cause that'd be a pretty cool thing to have, but, um, yeah, we wanted it to be collaborative. We also wanted the product to be, there's a, it needed a reason to exist and be different enough from, from something we make. Um, the first step was them deciding what they wanted to call it, went through a bunch of iterations. Uh, I'll let, I'll let people f- guess for themselves. They have some more songs that obviously lend themselves towards whiskey, uh, you know, 
metaphor or, or analogy, but as soon as they hit the trace hombres and they wanted that to be the deal. Um, yeah, we just kind of landed on, we make all these hundred percent corn, rye, malt. That's a big part of our past is these, these grains that are hundred percent and not mixed at all. Um, and so, yeah, there's three guys and everything that they brought to the table and, um, yeah, we just wanted to start there. So we started sending them some different options some, some, some preliminary blends with different proportions of each and did a couple of rounds of that. And, uh, luckily for us, they picked the one I wanted them to pick both times. So, uh, even that was kind of nice that we were in alignment on what, and what I hoped this could be and, uh, what they were responding to. So it's a pretty cool deal. So you actually had the whiskey in stock already from doing the separate Texas corn, rye, and malted barley, and all you had to do was blend them instead of having to wait three or four years for a new collaboration to come out. Right, right. And there's so many ideas. Um, They want this to keep going, and they've got, of course, all their own ideas about other things we could do and different proof versions or even alternate versions of the blend that we passed on, but that we like as a pretty close second. It's like, well, what if we back, go back to the one that is the, is mostly malt and not the one that's mostly corn. And so I think the next few years are going to be fun. We'll see the, these kinds of things. You never know how they're going to play out or what the kind what kind of legs they actually have. Um, but even brand identity wise, we've talked about this plenty. Um, but you know, there was, there wasn't any, any, any context or, or history to Texas whiskey when, us and Dan and a few other folks got started back in the day and it was just kind of an empty slate. Um, and we've kind of to some degree gotten to write our own path. And I feel like musically, um, I'm only 45. So I came into my knowledge of ZZ top by the time they were already in the eliminator phase with fuzzy guitars and the big beards. Um, but delving deeper, you know, as a grown up who, who thinks, especially Billy being a, you know, he's gotta be on everybody's top, 10 to 20 guitars still walking the planet. Um, what they did early and some of the stories that even were included in their documentary that came out last year of those early years. And I, I think they were, they were fusing things and they were combining influences in a very honest way, in a very transparent way that made a lot of sense to them that just happened to be something no one had really ever tried to put together before. Um, and I think a little bit of our internal kind of culture and story resonates with that pretty good. So I have to ask, did the uh, death of Dusty Hill a couple of months ago set the release of this back somewhat? It did a little bit, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, for obvi- I mean, it'd be obvious to anyone, there was a little bit of a halt on everything. Um, and we made it clear to them that this is priority. And even if the whole concept behind the project felt um, inappropriate now, um, that's completely understandable and we can either scrap it or we can start from scratch. If, if this, if all the direction ceases to make sense without the third ombre um, still being with us and they kind of felt the opposite. So there was a probably about a three week period where there wasn't a whole lot of interaction. And we said, we, you know, you guys initiate if you want to pick this back up. And uh, they ended up kind of deciding that they felt like it was actually going to be a really nice thing to wrap up. One of the last things that um, they, they had done together, you know, all three of them. And um pretty cool we you know because of covid i still i haven't spent any time in facetime in person with any of them um but uh our front of house manager just told me a day or two ago that uh frank beard's wife had called and wanted to preserve a bunch of cases for her to have for you know to give to friends for christmas and stuff like that so um yeah it had kind of everything we want in a collaboration and none of the things that i think celebrity endorsements and musician and band endorsements all the things I didn't want to have to deal with and the ways that it feels a little like fluff and uh, artificial. Um, and it had everything we did want, which was a lot of interaction and actually sitting there to get to sit with them and hear tasting notes and get their take on what they're hoping this could be. And what if we did this and what if we accentuated this? And um, I didn't expect that they actually uh, had opinions and had palettes and uh, knew what they wanted. So that was pretty cool. You hoping to uh, get Frank and Billy to the distillery sometime soon? Oh yeah. The pre COVID plans were pretty lofty. I mean, we had, we were going to have them come play a set and we were going to, you know, meet them up on the road. They're finishing up an album. There's supposed to be a tour coming. You know, we were going to hit some of the major markets and hang out in the, you know, before and after the show with them and their guests and pour whiskey for folks and all, all of that. 
So it's all still potential. If, if the world opens up a little bit and they feel a little more comfortable with uh, the health situation next year, maybe we can get back to some of those bigger picture plans. We just didn't want to keep putting it off any further because we had already delayed it multiple times thinking three months from now, surely it'll be slightly different. And then three months from now, and it, you know, we're still really not quite there. So back burner, we'll get to it. I shared my tasting notes for the Balconis Trays Hombres Whiskey last month in episode 909 of Whiskey Cast. You'll find them in the tasting notes section at whiskeycast.com, too. That's Whiskey Cast in depth, brought to you by Oban. Every sip of Oban is like a postcard from Scotland. Whether it's the classic Oban 14 year old, the 18 year old, Oban Little Bay, or the Distillers Edition, Every drop comes from the coastal town of Oban and a distillery just 206 steps away from the sea. It's one of Scotland's smallest distilleries, with just seven people who make whiskey the same way their predecessors have since 1794. Find out more at obanwhiskey.com. The Wadham Tasting This Week department is brought to you by Sagamore Spirit. And while I've already shared my tasting notes for the Balconis Trace Hombres collaboration with ZZ Top, I have several other similar whiskeys to look at this week. We can start with the new Heaven's Door Bootleg Series, Volume 3. Of course, Bob Dylan is one of the co-founders of Heaven's Door, and the annual Bootleg Series releases showcase Dylan's paintings on the bottle each year. The 2021 Bootleg Series release is a 13-year-old Kentucky bourbon finished in Vino de Naranja wine casks and bottled at 60.6% ABV. The nose is very dry and subtle, with touches of chocolate-covered orange slices, honey, molasses, and a hint of oak. The taste is thick and chewy with subtle hints of orange peel, clove, cinnamon, and black pepper, along with touches of molasses and oak in the background. Adding water opens up more subtle, fruity notes as well. The finish is long and dry with subtle spices, and I'm scoring the 2021 Heaven's Door Bootleg Series, Volume 3, a 93. Last month in Episode 909, Bardstown Bourbon Company's Dan Calloway introduced us to the American Highway Reserve Bourbon collaboration with country music star Brad Paisley. I received a sample the other day. This one is bottled at 48% ABV. The nose has a nice balance of caramel, vanilla, and sweet oak, along with hints of maple syrup and dried fruits. The taste has a cinnamon-apple spiciness along with fruity sweetness, Touches of peaches, apricots, and caramel add complexity, along with just a hint of oak. The finish is long with a lingering touch of cinnamon apple spiciness and hints of dried fruits. I'm scoring the American Highway Reserve Bourbon a 92. I'll have more tasting notes in just a minute, but first, this week's tasting notes are brought to you by Sagamore Spirit Rye Whiskey, they're reviving the tradition of Maryland-style rye at their Baltimore farm and waterfront distillery. In-person tastings are available once again at the distillery in Baltimore, but you'll also find a variety of virtual tours, tastings, and other experiences at the Sagamore Spirit website. And they're offering WhiskeyCast listeners a free virtual guided tasting. When you buy a bottle at your local retailer, a Sagamore Spirit teammate will help guide you through it. Might make a really good holiday gift, too. Visit SagamoreSpirit.com and use the code word WhiskeyCast, all one word, to access. Please drink responsibly. Brothers Bond Bourbon comes from the acting duo of Ian Summerhalder and Paul Wesley best known for their work on The Vampire Diaries, but they've turned a lot of their focus lately to blending and bottling their own bourbon, sourced originally from MGP. Brothers Bond is bottled at 40% ABV. The nose has touches of bananas, peach jam, brown sugar, honey, and toasted oak. 
The taste is sweet and fruity with subtle touches of baking spices, honey, and vanilla. And the finish is long and fruity with just a hint of spice. Props to them for doing their own blending work as well. I'm scoring Brothers Bond Bourbon a 90, and we are hoping to have Ian and Paul together on Whiskey Cast sometime after the holidays. Finally, in the one of these things is not like the others category, Angus McRail is not going to have his name on the gossip sites anytime soon, though as the whiskey sponge, he shares his own takes on the whiskey industry. Angus's whiskey sponge whiskies come out of decadent drinks in Scotland from the warehouses of Signatory. His latest Saturnalia blended malt is a 20-year-old blending of a batch of malt whiskies blended back in 2000 with some Glenrothes single malt distilled in 2001. It's bottled at 47.2% ABV, and the nose has a quite appropriate aroma of Christmas cake, along with orange oil, brown sugar, and just a hint of oak. The taste is thick and fruity with Christmas cake, a hint of spice, brown sugar, and oak tannins for a very nice balance and complexity. The finish is long with dark fruits and just a hint of spice. I'm scoring the Saturnalia 20-year-old blended malt from the Whiskey Sponge and Decadent Drinks, a 94. The What I'm Tasting This Week department is brought to you by Sagamore Spirit. I'll be adding these tasting notes to our searchable list of more than 3,200 whiskeys from all over the world. Check it out this week at whiskeycast.com. This holiday season, make it personal with Dewar's Custom Labels. But first, you'll need to choose your favorite bottle to gift. Dewar's 12-year-old has a balanced sweetness with notes of dried fruits, citrus, and vanilla, making it ideal for everyday indulgences. And then there's our 15-year-old, which was specially crafted to highlight the mellow, fruity, and floral character of Dewar's. Hints of oak-forward malts and rich vanilla, perfectly balanced with notes of honey, toffee, and floral. The perfect scotch for sharing during those memorable moments with friends and family. Now that the hard part is over, it's time to enter your message. Make it funny, make it sappy, make it personal, or keep it simple. Either way, you have 44 characters to say it. If you need a hand on a message, we have a few ideas to get you started. So head on over to doers.com to start wrapping the perfect double-age gift. Time now to open up the inbox for your voice, presented by Scarabus Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. I was walking Bader the Wonder Dog this weekend when we stopped by King's Road Brewing Company for a couple of pints of their Black Musket Stout. I had the stout. He got a bowl of water. I posted a photo of one of the pints on social media just for fun, and Eugene Fisher, at efisher18, responded with this on Instagram. So I guess the charming but regrettably dry town of Haddonfield, New Jersey is not completely dry. I've explained this before, but Haddonfield still does not allow liquor sales. The town did allow the brew pub to open a couple of years ago, after the state forced our little town to let New Jersey wineries start selling their wine through local retailers using their state-issued tasting room licenses things are getting a little better. There's a rumor that someone is even planning to open a micro distillery in town. And if that happens, we'll have to get rid of the tagline after 16 years. Two weeks ago, John Campbell joined us for his first interview since leaving Lafroig Distillery to become the production director at Lockley Distillery. I included a photo of John wearing Lockley blue instead of his traditional Lafroig dark green in our social media posts and on the website. That led to at Sir Drams a lot, Mario Campa, posting this comment on Instagram for John. Looking comfortable in your new home, sir. Very much looking forward to seeing you there. And last week, Ian Buxton compared the definition of craft whiskey to that for pornography, in that you know it when you see it. 
That brought this comment from longtime listener and fact checker Bill Ricker in Boston. Here's hoping Ian is making a literary allusion to Justice Stuart Potter's famous concurrence and not some deeper metaphor. Yep, but it was actually Justice Potter Stewart who coined that phrase, in his opinion, in a 1964 obscenity case. It was something he'd come to regret later on. Around the time he retired from the Supreme Court in 1981, he told an interviewer that, quote, In a way, I regret having said what I said about obscenity. That's going to be on my tombstone. If you have a question, suggestion, or anything else you'd like to share with whiskey lovers from around the world, you can always find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at WhiskeyCast. The email address, comments at WhiskeyCast.com. Your voice is presented by Scarabus, Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. I'm Jennifer Tate from Hunter Ling and Company, and we'd like to wish you and your family a happy festive season. Our Scarabus Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey makes the perfect holiday gift for toasting by the fireplace. Seek it out at Total Wine and more stores in the US and find whiskey shops worldwide. Scarabus, only those who seek shall find. Let's close out the show now with Behind the Label, our look at the history, science, and people who make whiskey unique. It's brought to you by Writer's Tears. Brian Marshall of Kettering, England, has been collecting whiskeys for more than four decades. He started out in the 1980s after he saw one of his co-workers collecting whiskeys, and he decided to focus on collecting miniature bottles— you know, the so-called airplane size ones. And as you might guess, this sort of turned into an obsession with Brian, and he wound up with something in the neighborhood of 4,000 or so of these little bottles. And as you might guess, this became something of an issue when it came time for Brian to move. So he packed up his 130 boxes full of bottles, along with a few books and other whiskey stuff, and took them to Gilding's Auctioneers. According to The Sun, it turns out that stuff was pretty valuable. The auction brought Brian almost 30,000 pounds in sales, including more than 2,200 pounds for a copy of Alfred Barnard's classic book, The Whiskey Distilleries of the United Kingdom. He paid just five pounds for it at a car boot sale, according to The Sun. But here's the thing. Brian doesn't even like whiskey. He says he finds the taste horrible. To be honest, that's probably a good thing. Otherwise, he might well have tasted all of those whiskeys over the years. If there is something you'd like to see us look at on an upcoming episode, just use the contact form at whiskeycast.com. Behind the Label is brought to you by Writer's Tears. Writer's Tears Copper Pot. The tears of Ireland's great writers bursting with flavour, humour and angst. Bottled for you to taste. No writers were harmed in the making of this premium Irish whiskey. Writer's Tears Copper Pot. Before we go, I'd like to take a minute on behalf of our entire family to wish you and your family the happiest of holidays and the best for 2022. Here's hoping we can finally find some sense of normal life again in the coming months. That's all for this edition of Whiskey Cast. You'll find links for the stories in this episode in our show notes at whiskeycast.com. That's also where you'll find the latest whiskey news, my tasting notes, the calendar of events, our whiskey photo of the week, and a complete archive of all of our past episodes going all the way back to 2005. Get in touch with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at WhiskeyCast. The email address is comments at WhiskeyCast.com. And now, a message from Robin Redbreast. Happy Holidays! On behalf of Redbreast, here's to you and yours. Eating well... 
enjoying a red breast or two, and getting all snug and cosy on the couch. <laughs> Reminds me of my own nest. Sure, there's no cushions or blankets, but I do have some very fancy decorative twigs, let me tell you. Proud sponsor of Whiskey Cast. Red breast. Pass it on. This holiday season, Doers has you covered for the perfect gift with free custom labels. Pick your bottle, add your personal message, and get a free custom label shipped right to your door. This year, it's that easy. Visit us at Doers.com, and here's to very happy holidays from us at Doers. Whiskey Cast is a production of Cast Strength Media, copyright 2021, and comes to you from the charming, yet regrettably dry town of Haddonfield, New Jersey. I'm Mark Gillespie, reminding you that when you drink, please drink responsibly. Have a great holiday season. Thanks for listening, and please stay safe.